Okay, we'll first go through the equilibrium situation in a competitive market and see what happens with uh, consumer and producer surplus uh, when there's no interferences in the market. Okay, firstly, we've got our, our downward sloping demand curve. And remember, why is it downward sloping? It's because well, people have a limited budget and if the prices of a particular good are really high, then not many people can afford it. So, so as the price drops, people, individuals can, uh, can afford to buy more of the, the good or the service and also new people enter the market as well who are suddenly able to afford it. So that's why it's downward sloping. But the supply curve, which is upward sloping. And why is it upward sloping? Well, we're going to see later that it reflects the marginal costs that the firm faces in supplying a good to the market in the, the short run. But you might like to just think of it at this stage as at higher prices, then firms are given incentives to actually produce more because they can potentially make more money. And also at low prices, uh, not many firms can actually afford to sort of produce at that level. But at higher prices, it, it induces new firms to enter the market and supply the good or service. So where does the, the market actually operate? Well, it's at the intersection of supply and demand at this point here if there's no interferences in the, the ordinary market mechanism. So that would be the equilibrium price, and that's the equilibrium quantity to, right there. Now getting onto the issue of surplus, which uh, a lot of people find uh, a bit confusing when they, they first uh, start thinking about it. The idea of consumer surplus is that there's a consumer here who is willing to pay this high price up here, and let's say it's $10 up here, uh, but the price of the good in the market is way down here. Let's say that one's sort of $5 and $10 up here. So this consumer, he's willing to buy it for $10, but goes down to the shop or the markets and finds that the good is only $5, is pretty happy because they're willing to pay $10, but only have to pay $5. So effectively, they get this, this area of surplus. They were willing to pay 10 but they only had to pay 5 And they're pretty happy about that because now they can go and instead of just buying the good with $10, they can buy the good and they can also buy a cup of coffee as well. There's also a second consumer here who's perhaps willing to pay $9 for the good. But again, they find that it's only going to be $5 uh, in, the, in the market. And so they have to pay less than they actually value the good for, which is fantastic. Willing to pay $9, only have to pay 5 So this whole area here, it's a group of customers, a group of buyers, who end up paying a lot less for the good than they're actually willing to pay. And so this entire area here is what we refer to as consumer surplus. It reflects the fact that consumers are getting a bargain. Um, they're actually willing to pay more for the good, but they're actually paying only the market price. And let's say that's, that's $5 in this case. So that's consumer surplus. Now, also, you might like to think about an individual firm here who might be willing to supply the good for just one dollar. But when he sells it in the market, he's actually able to get five dollars for it. So again, this this producer here, this seller here, is pretty happy because they're willing to sell it for say one. They're able to sell it for five. They get an extra four dollars above what they actually need. There's another firm here who's willing to sell it for say two dollars. Again but they're able to sell it for five dollars and so on. So all this area here is what we call uh, producer surplus. It's a surplus of sellers because they're able to sell the, the good in the market for a price that's higher than what they're actually willing to sell it for, which is uh, according to their supply curve. Okay, so we've got consumer surplus. Remember, the way to work this out effectively is you just work out the price at which the, the equilibrium point at which the, the market's actually going to operate. Uh, draw a line horizontally across to the vertical axis. And basically anything between the demand curve and that horizontal line is going to be consumer surplus. And anything above the supply curve to the horizontal line here is going to be producer surplus. Now, because society is made up of consumers and producers, then the idea is that the total area of consumer surplus plus, plus producer surplus is equal to something called social surplus.
and social surplus is simply the consumer surplus plus the producer surplus. So it's this entire area here. Now you can often actually work out, just using the area of a, a triangle or area of rectangles, whatever the shapes are, you can often work out the actual dollar amount of this consumer surplus. So for example, we know this price is $10 here, this is $5 here, and let's say this quantity over here is 10 over this point, then we can actually work out the area of this as the area of a triangle, half base times height. So the height here is $5, the base is $10, so half base times height here is going to be $5 times $10, which is $50, um, times half is equal to $25. So the area of consumer surplus here is $25. Likewise, producer surplus, well again this is a triangle, the height is $4 in this case, from $1 to $5. The, um, the base is $10 here, so $4 times $10 is equal to $40, so the producer surplus is equal to $20. And since the social surplus is equal to the consumer plus the producer surplus, the social surplus would be $45.